A British national and six other aid workers have been killed in a suspected Israeli strike in Gaza. The Israeli military said that it's carrying out an in-depth examination to understand the circumstances of this tragic incident. Uh, both the Foreign Secretary David Cameron and the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak have uh, spoken out on this issue. The Prime Minister has said he's asked Israel to investigate urgently what happened and he says that their view uh, is that there have been too many civilian deaths in Gaza. Now, uh, joining me right now to discuss this is former NATO and Royal Navy Commander Rear Admiral Dr Chris Parry. Good afternoon to you, Chris. Hi, Julia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, look, we've been in situations before where an accusation is the IDF has carried out an airstrike and is responsible for uh, killing new hundreds of people in a hospital airstrike which wasn't carried out by the IDF and didn't kill hundreds of people, interestingly. In terms of what's happened here, do we know for certain yet whether it was the IDF? No. There's uh, absolutely no evidence. Uh, there's no visual evidence. Um, there's uh, certainly a number of things that are quite odd about the vehicles that you see. Uh, the basic problem is that uh, even when you do get damaged by the Israelis, um, people interfere with the evidence. They gild the lily. Uh, they try and make it look like it's something else. If you look at that picture you're seeing at the moment, look at the doors and the windows. If you've got an explosion, they normally blow the windows and the doors out. Um, just, so, just to describe for I, I people who were, Chris, just people who are listening rather than, than, than watching, again, it was, it was a white van, but it's got the, uh, the, the, the logo for the charity, the World Central Kitchen, which is a huge, yeah. uh, huge um, aid uh, to charity. Uh, they've been working there. We, say, we understand that all the aid workers did have their flak jackets on, their uh, bulletproof vests, which had their logo on as well. And, and that showed a sort of a really you know, big sort of mark uh, and explosion in the... Uh, in the, the top of the uh, uh, of the building, oh, obviously of the of the vehicle, and and devastation inside. But as you say, the doors the doors are appearing to still be intact. Well, there's more than one vehicle, Julia. Yeah. That's the other thing. Um, and uh, I'm afraid to say the way that it's presented, uh, it looks fishy. I, I I've no idea whether the Israelis did it or not. To tell you the truth, um, but you've got to ask yourself: this is an organisation that can perfectly target. Uh, people in a building in Damascus and not kill anybody else. Uh, and yet they seem to have made a mistake here. It, it's not consistent. But but we do uh, know the mistakes do happen in the fog of war. We do. do know that. And and again, it may have been uh, a, 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 a mistargeted or they may have targeted the convoy. We're told it was a humanitarian convoy. They may have targeted the convoy uh, believing that it was military. Now, that's the difficulty, isn't it, with Hamas, who blatantly use... Um, you know, humanitarian targets and civilian targets as shields. Yeah, the other problem is, Julia, is that, uh, you know, Hamas want this to happen uh, because it, it sparks the sort of political and public outrage that you're seeing here. So uh, I, I do worry about Hamas setting up these aid workers uh, as false flags. Um, so uh, it may well be that that's the case. But, you know, everything from the Israelis having done it by mistake or deliberately all the way through to a set up by Hamas is perfectly possible. Uh, I mean, quite a lot of people are saying who are experts in this, it looks like uh, an improvised explosive device uh, that was probably intended for an Israeli vehicle. I mean, that's one possibility as well. I know from our time in Bosnia, uh, this sort of damage would have been blamed on a cruise missile. Uh, but you and I, Julia, both know the cruise missile would take most of the, the building alongside it out as well. And yet people very happily spread around that it was um, it was a cruise missile rather than a car yeah. bomb. And this uh, is... The answer is, Julia, I, I don't know. Don't know. But that, okay? and, that, but... and that's very important. But I don't know is very important in the fog of war. You know, there are things we are told and the things we can know. Um, and the reality is that we, the IDF, the Israeli government, they would be crazy to be deliberately targeting humanitarian aid workers, especially with foreign nationals, uh, because it puts other governments that have been supportive, perhaps being less supportive, uh, in a difficult position. But are you disappointed, just find it, by the reaction of, uh, of Western leaders being more, talking more and more about humanitarian pause, putting pressure on the Israelis, when so much of the pressure, even with that UN vote, has been about... You know, Israel stopping bombing in Gaza, stopping forces in Gaza. But so little pressure seems to be going on Hamas to release the hostages and to stop their war efforts. Absolutely, uh, Julia. The, the one thing that uh, I always worry about as an ex-military man is everybody's crying for a ceasefire, but nobody says what's happening after that. Yeah. Um, nobody has a plan. Uh, if somebody says ceasefire and here's a plan, I'd be happy. But the only people with a plan right now are the Israelis, and they're getting on with it. And right now, 
the plan is working from their point of view, why would they give up? 